Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in today's tutorial on the A320 we are going to have a look at the after landing procedure. We have vacated the runway completely, that means the entire airplane behind the uh, line and for the purpose of the tutorial I've stopped the airplane. In the real world you would keep the airplane rolling as much as possible. Now, the after landing procedure is initialized or initiated when the pilot flying is going to disarm the ground spoilers. So once well clear of the runway, once everything is done, the pilot flying is going to disarm the ground spoilers and that is the sign for the pilot monitoring to start the procedure as well. On top of that, the pilot flying may either set himself the exterior lights or request the pilot monitoring to do so. So what do you do? Well, strobe lights order, landing lights off, no slack taxi. And with that the pilot flying's part is done. After that comes the pilot monitoring's part, which is going to be weather radar off, then you move further, flaps, either to 1 if the temperature is 30 degrees or higher, or to 0, and transponder onto standby. Now, if the approach was performed in icing conditions, or if the runway was contaminated with sl slush or slow, do not retract the flaps until after engine shut down and after the ground crew confirmed that the flaps and slats are clear of obstruction due to ice. Then, from there on, the uh, pilot monitoring is moving on to the overhead panel and starting the APU, so master switch on, wait 3 seconds, and then the APU starter, and finally the anti-ice is going to be switched as necessary. And that is the after landing procedure complete, now we can run the after landing checklist which is going to be quite simple. Radar and predictive wind shear. You verify that there is no radar indication here and that you get the amber predictive wind shear here of after landing checklist complete. So with that we can now start our taxi in procedure. So let's go ahead release that brake and we are now going to taxi our airplane in. Be aware that you should limit your thrust to thrust settings normally used on a taxi over here and really try to keep the thrust to as little as possible. Now, once we are vacating the runway, we would also start the timer and time for at least two minutes from vacating the runway or three minutes after very high thrust, such as maximum reverse has been used. And then we are going to conduct single engine taxi in. Now, single engine taxi in absolutely is a standard procedure for the A320 family aircraft and unless you are at high gross weights, close to the maximum landing weight, you would really do single engine taxi in pretty much always on uh, any inbound um, on any inbound flight. So single engine taxi is considered standard operating procedure and for that reason I am going to feature it in this video as well. So for the parking we just need to taxi for a little while and of course having the engines running is going to use quite a bit of fuel. So single engine taxi can save quite a bit of that. If you have a look at the fuel for values over here, we're looking at 300 kilograms per side. And those 300 kilograms per side divided by 60 gives you how much fuel we are using per minute. And I haven't studied mathematics, but 300 divided by 60 does tell you you're using about five kilograms of fuel per minute so if you can save let's say two or three minutes of engine run time then that is absolutely worth it already now due to the time that we took standing clear of the runway we have already reached those three minutes for a single engine taxi so here is the procedure first thing you verify that the apu avail shows down here on the ecam when apu avail shows always shut down engine number two, never shut down engine number one. That is due to the way the hydraulic system is constructed on the A320. So we're taxing in a straight line. We have a good amount of speed here. So when the engine is at idle thrust, you're going to shut down engine number two and then immediately turn on the electric hydraulic pump. The latter is needed in order to ensure availability of sufficient steering controls for your flight. And well, for that engine number two shutdown, I'm just going to give you a quick example here of the differences it makes. So 
depending on the conditions, you are looking at a thrust setting of about 30 to 40 percent in order to accelerate on a single engine. But look at the fuel flow. Even while accelerating, we just have 500 kilos an hour of fuel flow compared to the combined fuel flow of 600 kilos an hour with both engines running an idle thrust. So already here we are accelerating and we are already saving fuel like that. Now, as you can see, the airplane maneuvers completely fine on a single engine, but I just want to show you how much performance you have left in this aircraft. So let's go all the way to 40% N1, which is the maximum N1 that you're supposed to have on the ground. And just look at how well the airplane actually accelerates over here. As you can see, no problem at all. The only situations in which single engine taxi should not be conducted are when you are either going over a slippery surface or when you're planning to go uphill. So that is really when you would not conduct single engine taxi. Apart from that, you can see it works very, very well and it's very easy to execute and it does achieve significant amount of fuel savings. So with this, we have already finished this part of the tutorial. So let's go ahead and pick the next gate on the left hand side here in order to have a look at the parking. Now, when you're approaching your parking, be sure that the APU is available and start it in time if you did not start the APU beforehand. When you're approaching the parking gate, you can either ask your pilot monitoring or you can do it yourself and turn off the nose and the turn off lights. Now, in this case, I am just going to turn them off myself here while a little bit in front of the gate because it does just make the entire thing a bit easier. Now, those of you who have been working with the A320 in the sim for a longer time, you will be aware that Airbus wants you to turn on the APU bleed before shutting down the engines. That's correct, but only do it just prior to touchdown. Don't do it like right now. So turning into the gate, I personally always check the weather radar one more time and make sure that the lights are turned off. Be sure to control your speed, like right here. Five knots is a good speed to taxi into the gate. You shouldn't go much faster than that. And if you're taxiing in on a single engine, then remember good control of your energy, respectively your speed is paramount over here, since you would need a lot of thrust if you really came to a stop over here. Okay then, quick look at the guidance system. Looks like we don't have one with speed warnings on there. So when you're approaching the um, parking part of your gate, just slow it down to a decent speed. It looks like this one is broken anyway. So I'm just going to stop the airplane right over here. Okay, airplane stopped, parking brake set. And with that, we would go into the shutdown procedure. Now I am going to make that one a separate video because there are a couple things that you need to check out for the landing. So I'm going to make that one a separate video. With that, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. Hope that you have enjoyed this one. And as always, if you're up for more, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe so that you get notified of new videos as they come out. Finally, if you really like what I'm doing over here, would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. But until then, I'd like to say thank you very much and I'll see you all again on the next one.